Okay, hello everyone. So it's time for uh, Prosma Friday chat with user centrics this time. We have a uh, still audience coming in, so let's do the actual introductions in a minute. But meanwhile, so hi, Idan, how are you doing today? Hi, Marco. Happy uh, Friday. Thank you for having me today in uh, such a nice and sunny day. Indeed, indeed. So it's uh, good here as well. And uh, I just want to bring greetings from very sunny Helsinki, Finland to, to everybody. It's uh, finally the true summer. It's about 25 degrees Celsius out there. And, and uh, specifically in Finland, the summertime is something special because the winter is so long and so dark that Generally, everybody just loves this uh, summer, summertime. <laughs> it's the same here. This week was amazing. We had like uh, 27 degrees almost uh, all week long. So uh, everyone are on the bicycles here in Amsterdam and smiling. So it's uh, great to have uh, this uh, chat today and this lovely Friday. Exactly. And also, well, the football teams around Europe, they may have a bit hard time with these temperatures. But anyways, it's... Uh, it's a uh, great entertainment to to see these uh, games nowadays. Definitely, here the streets are uh, full of orange, and the Dutch team uh, won yesterday. So also uh, a good uh, reason to smile. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to all winners. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so it's two past. So let's um, actually get started. So my name is uh, Marco Mantere. I'm from uh, Prosmo. I'm head of uh, customer success unit here and uh, basically our team is working with uh, Frostmas customers uh, during all the phases of um, uh, the customers. It, it's uh, onboarding, training, uh, support for customers, uh, bigger projects, what we are delivering, so you name it. And um, if you don't know Frostma from before, I just want to quickly mention that, that uh, Frostma is the most versatile personalization and, and recommendation software it's really easy to take in use. Um, you'll, you'll get the quick results. Uh, you'll reach uh, full adaptability. And uh, then you're ready for starting the, the optimizations on this area. So, uh, but today we are uh, focusing more on user centrics and um, content management. So, Idan, please uh, introduce yourself and user centric as well. Thank you, Marco. So uh, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm uh, Idan. I'm a strategic partnership uh, manager at UserCentrics. UserCentrics is the uh, leading consent management platform in Europe, uh, based in uh, Munich, Germany, the headquarter with uh, uh, offices internationally here in Amsterdam, Lisbon, and the US. And to the one who don't know uh, a bit about consent management, we are enabling companies to harmonize their marketing and data strategies in order to the requirements of websites and apps with the uh, different legal requirements. Uh, by doing this, we are uh, helping uh, each kind of uh, our partners and clients to reach uh, their goals and be compliant. Um, and we'll go from here. All right. So um, this topic of constant management, it's actually quite wide when you really um, go deeper into it. And today we'll discuss about it uh, from different perspectives. Uh, we at Prosmo, we are working with e-commerce companies and, and also other companies uh, offering services over over web. And we, of course, also get uh, various kind of questions of the topic uh, during, during our cooperations. And uh, today we'll go through a certain amount of uh, these basics. And uh, We'll, we'll talk first about uh, what and why is content management needed. Then uh, uh, the compliancy, the being compliant, uh, compliant question is an important one. Then actually when the basics are there, uh, on opt-in rate is a very important topic and, and why we'll hear about that as well. Then about some practicalities, how to start and, and how to work on desktop and, and mobile. And at this point, I want to remind that you can send, send uh, questions throughout the session, and uh, we'll then cover cover them at the end. Anything else you want to add, Idan? 
No, I'm definitely excited uh, to start and to see what the other questions that uh, will pop up like uh, during our conversation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, to me, this content management it kind of uh, was brought into the picture through uh, GDPR, which in uh, 2018, and, and uh, since then we have uh, been different kind of approaches on this area. And, and uh, as mentioned, so Idan is a real true <clears throat> expert on this area. So it's a very uh, good position to ask this basic question that that what and why are we talking about uh, content management? Please. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great uh, question uh, to start with uh, and start with why. Um, and here we know that like uh, the uh, website is uh, the number one compliant risk because everyone can detect any kind of breach of data. And this is why website owners and users would like to have you know their data privacy compliant. So we have the uh, legal situation as you can see here in, in the slide, and we have the legal requirements. As we know, all of us uh, here in Europe, the GDPR, but we also have the CCPA in the US and more and more legal uh, requirements all around the world. And um, so we have this, uh, you know, legal requirements, but what else? And when we come in and deep dive into it, we understood that we all want to ensure our data collection, both uh, the uh, company and both the user. Uh, the company would like to uh, to collect uh, the information and to process it in order to use it uh, for the future. And the user on his end uh, would like to make sure that the data that's been collected is according to uh, their own uh, compliance and need, I would say. And the third one that uh, I would say, this is the messaging that we're trying to bring it's to optimize the uh, marketing activities. As we know, like e-commerce and uh, more companies and uh, industries would like to have marketing activities and to refund and find their uh, users around the uh, web. And in order to do it, they need to collect uh, the consent to activate their uh, marketing and retargeting activities. And if to sum up this uh, slide, um, we know that uh, privacy has ROI at the end of the day and opt-in rate become the uh, new KPI, and we will talk it, uh, about it uh, in the continue of our conversation. All right, so basically, well, if I quickly summarize what I uh, understood, so the legal uh, is the kind of basis, and from a consumer or end user perspective, they need to have a way to make decisions about how their data is used. That's kind of the given conditions. But then from business perspective, it's really important to make this right so that businesses can then really um, benefit from the possibility to utilize the data for the benefit of the end user and also for the benefit of the business. So, um, and then when one understands this basic setup, so then we, we get to this uh, really important and interesting topic of uh, optimizing the opt-in rate, and we'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. Correct. But then, um, well, meanwhile, while we now understand the uh, big picture here, so then the next question, which is also asked us often, is that, um, so this uh, being compliant and, and then organizing this consent management. So how would you then describe this? Uh, that What everything needs to be taken into account to uh, be on the safe side? Correct. And, and this is uh, also a question that uh, pop up uh, every time in every conversation. So what do I need to do in order that to be compliant? And because the origin of it is like the GDPR and the regulations, they tell us what are the uh, different criteria that uh, we need to be uh, uh, fulfilled in order to be uh, fully compliant. And as we can see in, in this slide, uh, this is like a, a very simple uh, example of like how a banner looks like. And uh, I will go a bit with, with the clockwise. Uh, so the, the first and a uh, very important thing is like to be freely that like uh, you can come to the website and take your own decision if you want to uh, accept or deny um, the, the consent that you'll have the ability to go granularly on the different services that are on the website and you'll be able to, to choose in between, informed that you will have the information, what this specific technology or survey does, 
and uh, what are the uh, goals for it and to be informed and know what is happening with your data. And more than that is to be documented. If a user wants to uh, know and understand if uh, he gave the consent and come to the website, so the website owner need to make sure that they have like this uh, consent and opt-in in or opt-in out documented for like uh, future services. Uh, easy opt-in out, this is uh, very straightforward. Every user need to have the ability to opt uh, out um, in the easiest way. As we can see, uh, we have like the small fingerprints on, on the left side that uh, can uh, um, uh, bring back the uh, banner and the user can uh, opt out uh, in any time uh, they want. Explicit, it's just about a click of a button. This have to be uh, simple and easy to use. And prior means the uh, different kind of technologies that are not have to be uh, there in order to uh, uh, make the uh, website uh, run. It's also the ability to give the opt-in rate and the consent that is given. So it's only seven and it makes sense and it's straightforward. And what we're trying to do in, in our banners is really to um, answer all those uh, seven criteria that the user will feel uh, the uh, trust and trustworthy and transparent in order to give uh, their data here. Hmm. So there are quite a many topics, so seven listed here. And uh, one could imagine that um, this would be really, really complicated. But, but actually, when it's all put in a, in a very smooth UI and uh, explained in a clear way and structured so that it's totally understandable, it basically um, provides the end user possibility to, to control their data. And um, it makes, this makes it understandable. And what you understand, you can trust. And that's, of course, the key to uh, giving the consent and, and trusting that the service provider would uh, act accordingly. Yes, and, and this is what we are trying uh, to do here at User Centrics. As you mentioned, uh, compliance and data privacy uh, can be a, a bit uh, complex, and we try to simplify as, uh, as the best we can that every user and every uh, website owner or app owner can feel uh, comfortable to uh, share uh, and uh, put our uh, banner on their website or app and uh, to fulfill the trust uh, with their uh, user to collect their uh, data. Yes. And then I believe everybody remembers that um, over years, talking about data in this context has been talking about cookies. But um, actually, the much more modern and, and uh, Actually, the correct um, approach is that it's not about cookies, but it's about technologies. So basically, um, what different kind of um, different software add-ons features can be brought to a site when there's a constant to do that. Uh, that's uh, this more about. And now, when we are talking about this, this is technologies instead of just cookies. So that obviously needs some special uh, software technology. So how do you actually track and, and uh, work with these technologies? Yeah, as, as we spoke a, a few uh, days ago, then we uh, started to talk about the presentation and how to prepare. So ev everyone mentioned cookies, correct? Uh, CMP knows to, uh, to tackle like uh, third party cookies or first party cookies. Uh, but uh, we in user centric decide to uh, answer and um, uh, take the, uh, into consideration the different services that are integrated uh, to the website and technologies. And what we develop is uh, a, a website uh, scanner, together with like uh, our uh, DPS scanner, we scan uh, the website to understand what are the uh, services or technologies that are integrated and uh, that are sharing information, uh, third-party information. And we present it in a very straightforward way to um, to the company in our admin interface. And by seeing those technologies, the um, company can uh, decide under which category they would like to categorize it. And here we have in this slide this uh, before and after how it looks like. So those are the results of, uh, of the scan. We can see here, uh, for example, uh, YouTube 
and how we defined it like uh, at the uh, banner itself. So we have the category, uh, which is functional, and the YouTube uh, service uh, specific in order to uh, have YouTube videos uh, run in the website uh, once uh, giving uh, the consent. Um, by doing this and not focusing on the cookies, we can really uh, block the technology from running in the background when the uh, website is uh, uploaded. Um, and this gave like uh, much more flexibility for the uh, company itself and for the user uh, to really decide which kind of services they would like to give their consent to. Um, so we have the option of category level or service level. And the most important is the uh, flexibility and transparency uh, for the user itself. This clearly demonstrates that um, your solution makes this really easy for both uh, service provider, I mean the site, site owner, and also the end user. And again, I, I want to refer to the fact that when you understand something, you, you start to trust it much more likely than, than uh, things which you don't really get. So it's a, it's a great setup. Um, but when, when this, uh, the basics are there, then obviously starts the, the, the um, work around optimizing the so-called um, constant opt-in rate. And, and what we can then talk about that. So what's, what's the most important topic there? Correct. So with the time, you know, uh, companies try to have uh, uh, the banners and uh, approve the consent and to understand what kind of uh, information can be co collected. Uh, and the definition uh, that we are saying for opt-in rate is the uh, uh, sum of uh, accept uh, users uh, versus the uh, all uh, visitors of the website. Uh, so here we can see the average. So 60% of uh, the visitor are accepting uh, the, the, the consent and the different services. And as we can see here, um, every industry starts in a different position. And those things are depends in the industry, in the business model, in the country, type of device. And this is why the, the start point is maybe a bit different at each one of the industries. But as we can see, when we start to optimize, we can get to a kind of an average of uh, most of the industry here as we see here, like uh, the, the 60%. Uh, percent. And of course, when we optimize uh, the banner, the wording, uh, the uh, colors of the button, so what we call in customization, this helps the, uh, the user to uh, be uh, more uh, proactive when they're deciding uh, if to accept all or to accept uh, specific technologies for the uh, companies and website owners to uh, have uh, the data I am secure on their end. Yes, this is very interesting um, graph in the sense that also Prosmo is working with um, many different verticals. So maybe e-commerce is the <clears throat> most common, but also telecommunications is is um, uh, often the area of our customer. So the, what this tells to me is that uh, what you actually mentioned is that when you start with content management and uh, make the initial setup, the work doesn't stop there, but you can read so much more when you start to look at things and, and really optimize how your setup uh, is. 100%, and one of the things, of course, is the uh, business model, and we all know that like uh, in e-commerce, the, uh, the main business model is the, is the conversion rate, that the user comes to the website and hopefully purchase. So the e-commerce at the beginning uh, decide, let, let's see what are the minimum requirements that we need to do in order to be compliant, but also secure um, the uh, revenue at the end of the day. And from there, we start uh, to optimize and we'll see a few examples um, in the next slides. But as we can see, we start maybe uh, pretty low with the uh, with e-commerce, e but it, it's one of the highest at the end of the day. So this uh, occurring and like ongoing uh, optimization this is exactly, I think, the, the, the secret how to, uh, to make it correct. And yeah. you can also see the gaps between the uh, start point and the, uh, let's say, the max. So there is uh, some kind of a benchmark to work on. It's not like 1% or 2%. This can be like a 20 or 30% that can give us this kind of a leverage. 
Yeah, and and um, well, we'll we'll talk in a minute about that. that what uh, are the factors which can affect this? So basically, making the UI easy and and um, concentrating about branding and such. So all these little factors build the trust, and then uh, people are more about to to give their consent. But actually, uh, what I understood is that the one big challenge is not only about getting the opt in or or opt out but actually getting an answer at all. So how have you have, uh, studied this topic? Yes, it, it's like everyone asking you, like uh, everyone uh, doing the accept or, or, or doing deny, but most of them may be doing deny, but these are the stats. This is uh, stats from 40 different CMPs with more than like uh, 100 million, uh, you know, a response that we collected in order to have this, you know, like kind of statistic here. And what surprisingly we can see that it's not only about the accepted deny, it's about the ones who decided not to uh, press anything and to uh, decide to interact with the website and to continue their uh, active there. And this shows us the potential that we have to increase the opt-in rate. So here we can really see the numbers that it's between 20 to uh, 35, maybe 40% that we can really work in order to optimize it. And I would say, as we see here, we need to balance, you know, in between the enforcing the action, but reducing also the balance rate. So how we uh, do this kind of intelligent optimization in order to make sure that the uh, user are not bouncing out from the website. Um, and I think this is the, the secret about the opt-in optimization. Right, and then the approach obviously is uh, somehow different on uh, desktop browsers and, and uh, mobile usage. So could you describe a bit about these differences? Correct. So when, when people come uh, and, and talk about consent, I would say uh, they, they mostly come and discuss about like uh, desktop. This is what we saw in the, uh, I would say, two uh, uh, first year when we were there. But uh, more and more uh, companies and websites have also a uh, uh, mobile. So let's uh, d d talk about like uh, each one of those and in the example here you know if i can show this banner without the results here people will say maybe this one or maybe that one which is okay but what's causing it so mm -hmm. for the example on on the right you can see that the banner is in the uh, upper side of the page with only accept button that this maybe uh, can uh, make the user feel like uh, I'm not sure that only accept what about the other option. Um, and also the user can scroll down the website and engage with the website. On the uh, left example here, we can see that the, um, that the banner is in the center of the website. So it makes it a bit harder to, uh, to scroll or to engage with the website. But we also see the different wording, right? Like. Uh, we give you the option to choose. We want you to choose. So the choice of the wording and how to approach to the user that come to the website, this is something that build the trust immediately. Yes, we are collecting some kind of a data, but it will be the data that you approve to us. And you can accept, deny, or to choose different kind of option. And we can see here like a 13% different that if we said in the uh, previous uh, slides that uh, every uh, opt-in rate difference come to an ROI, we can see here that we can create a 13% difference in a future ROI. And this is something that uh, more and more uh, websites and companies owner are interested in how to improve it and to optimize it. That really is a big difference. So, uh, so in other words, so making it right, uh, you really benefit from it. And when I'm looking at these examples as, uh, as uh, my consumer had on, so on the left side example, I clearly feel more more transparent. I see options. I feel that I have a control, and and um, while the right one side somehow, I feel that I'm forced to click that only option. I don't, I don't have any any chance, and that may obviously makes the uh, difference in this example. Correct, and then of course uh, this is what we work uh, with our uh, clients and try to also. Uh, help and educate our partners in order to support their clients on what are the different, uh, I would say, um, changes or uh, actions that they can take in order to, to optimize uh, in the best way. We have another example here in the next slide. 
that uh, also make uh, a lot of sense. And here we see that like uh, the uh, color, the look and feel of the corporate identity, which is all already, you know, like talk about trust because you trust the brand or the website that you're visiting. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like a four to five percent difference depends on the uh, on the website. But everyone used to that uh, uh, green is accept and, uh, and this is correct uh, way. But if uh, the color of your brand uh, are uh, black, so do it like this. And this is something that, that works. And then we can see it and we support our clients, of course, uh, in this one as well. Yeah, in that way, uh, you feel that the brand who you trust, it's the one which talks to you, not some somebody like else. And of course, then you trust it more. Correct. Yes. But then, uh, well, mobile usage is, is somehow uh, different and they are, um, well, different kind of laws of nature in there. So what we can say about mobile usage? So, so as we, as we all know, you know, like we, we all have our mobile in our hand, you know, so it's, it's the way that we behave. Every user on the computer maybe uh, behave differently, but we have so many devices uh, out there. So we need to understand, you know, how a user behave on, on their, uh, on their mobile. And, and this kind of like a, a simple uh, heat map uh, that you all know are uh, demonstrating the way that like a, a user can use usually with their thumb, um, on to uh, click on, on some of the buttons and the placement of the buttons of the accept or, uh, or, or deny or ignore are really depends, you know, where the green area is. And we can see it in the, in the next example. Yeah. These kind of heat maps, they are of course a result of uh, long-term studies, general studies on the area, but it's really interesting that how they can be utilized also in this uh, context. Yes, and, and, and that's the, the best simple. If we see uh, on, on the left example, it's like really easy to, to, to miss uh, the, uh, the correct uh, uh, pressing that you want to do or where, where you want to do the click. So it's easier to split them in a way that how the, uh, uh, how the uh, behavior or the uh, move that uh, you do with, with your thumb and finger. And we found out that like the example from the right can create uh, more uh, opt-in rates by just changing the location of the buttons. Uh, simple as that, but, but it's working. And those are a uh, few examples how we are trying to optimize the opt-in rate. Yeah, and also here, here um, the results, they kind of match with the theory of, of uh, uh, what makes or easiest to use and, and makes customer to feel that they, it's a secure to use the system because they can control it in a nice way. Yes. Uh, but then, well, given that uh, you are set up with the basics and, and uh, then you start to really care about the opt-in rate, so where should one then start? I, I would always say, you know, you can send us an email or visit our website and we will help you with that. But uh, to the audience here that like uh, are in, the, in this live chat and to the ones that will see it after, it's an ongoing process. It's a circle that you learning exactly how the uh, user uh, behave on the website, what is important for them. We gave you uh, a few examples if it's like uh, the different wording, the, uh, the location of the banner itself, if the background is like hidden or not, if it's in the center. Um, and those are things that are really helping uh, in the process, but there is always room for improvement, right? If you are working in a specific country and you see uh, X results, it doesn't matter that, uh, it doesn't mean that in a different country, it will be the same because maybe the user behavior is a bit different. And this is why we always recommend to uh, continue check it and look at the analytics that we have in the admin interface in order to uh, improve it. And of course, using our, um, I would say like uh, insights and best practices that we all the time releasing and sharing, uh, you know, online and on LinkedIn. Yeah, again here as well. So those uh, famous low, low hanging fruits and uh, they would provide you the best bang for the buck. And, uh, Correct kind of structuring your work and, and recognizing uh, the different uh, different factors. It's important here as well. But uh, also here we can see that 
uh, with certain activities done, you can read so much. Yes, and in this slide we see like in the, in the uh, darker blue, like the high impact and low effort. So either really minimum uh, effort to do it, it's few clicks on our admin interface and it's already improved between 10 to uh, 30%. So it's like something that is uh, very useful. And then you do the another adjustment and it's uh, also between four to 11%. And this is the way you're going. So of course at the beginning, uh, it, it will be the uh, biggest impact. But as we uh, saw from uh, all this presentation, it's always ongoing and there is always relation to the ROI and how to secure the data in order to um, use it in the marketing effort. So I would say that every percent of opt-in counts. Very well. So this basically um, summarizes the overview we, we planned for this session, but now it's time then uh, to check if there's any any questions from the uh, audience to cover? Or, of course, it could be that we already answered most of the topics of interest. Well, one, one uh, basic question is, is uh, often when I talk with our customers regarding this concept management, it's often related to those uh, technologies and, and how to categorize them and, and uh, how to um, then order them for the end user to do so. Do you have any tips and tricks for that part yet? Yes, I, I think uh, at, at the end of the day, w when you have your own website and maybe work with an agency, but you know uh, usually what is the um, reason or uh, goal of this specific technology. So you can already identify those kind of usage or categories, but it's always a legal decision. So of course, some of the companies have their DPOs or legal departments in order to help in this process, but we always uh, connect with some of our partners, our legal partners, in order to support the client or the partners uh, to have uh, this kind of uh, easy and smoother uh, way to do it. But uh, I agree with you, this is something that they always come up like, okay, what would this kind of technology, where it should go? Um, I always say marketing, but uh, of course it's up to the uh, DPO and the legal advisor. Yeah, but it's also very easy to, easy to learn when you just start uh, working with it. Um, uh, I, I, I would say another, another question that I usually uh, receive, so uh, how long does it take? Uh, so I, I'm not a techie guy, and I can say that uh, in the first time it took me around uh, 20, 30 minutes to do the configuration and the integration, which is uh, pretty straightforward. And this is what we're saying, we're always here to support. And I think uh, to have a banner in 20 or 30 minutes and enjoy the uh, low hanging fruits afterwards, uh, this is uh, something that totally makes uh, sense to be uh, fully compliant and enjoy the effort. So that's really encouraging. So basically, just start doing it and, and uh, you'll be soon there. Um, to conclude, so basically what I have learned through our discussion is that um, content management, uh, when it's done right, it basically provides uh, the end user better customer service when uh, we can, or sites can utilize better uh, technologies and, and such on their, their site, but also it gives really a lot of benefits for the business itself because then they can utilize uh, the data, the very, very valuable data uh, to improve their business. Correct. It's not only about co be compliant, it's uh, also to uh, enjoy uh, the uh, uh, data that uh, the user are willing to provide. Thanks for the trust and transparency that you create from the first step that like they're coming to the website, they see a banner, they're not afraid of it. You have all the option uh, to, to click on the service you want. And then as a, a company or a website, you can uh, use it in a proper way for your marketing efforts. Right. So we have been talking more than 30 minutes now, and uh, I really want to thank uh, our audience. Thanks for joining. And really big thank for, for uh, Idan that we, we had you here today. 
Thank you for having me, Marco, and thank you for uh, Frosmo to this uh, partnership. I'm looking forward uh, to continue working together. And for the one who watch, thank you very much for uh, being with us and uh, have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Have a nice summer days. Bye bye.